the gospel now. But some of them said, it is true, Beelzebul, the prince of devils, that he drives devils out. Others asked him as a test for a sign from heaven. But knowing what they were thinking, he said to them, any kingdom which is divided against itself is heading to ruin and house and house collapses against house. So too with Satan, if he is divided against himself, how can his kingdom last? Since you claim that it is true principle that they drive out devils. Hello, divided against himself, how can his kingdom last? Since you claim that it is true principle that they drive devils out. Now if it is true principle that they drive devils out, through whom do your own son drive them out? This shall be your judges then. But if it is true the fingers of God that I drive devils out, then the kingdom of God hath indeed caught you unaware. <coughs> so long as you so as a strong man fully armed guards his house or his goods are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than himself attacks and defeats him, the stronger man takes away all the weapons he relies on and share out his point. Anyone who is not with me is against me. Anyone who does not gather with me throws away. <clears throat> when an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it wanders through the waterless country looking for a place to rest. And not finding any, it says, I will go back to the house I came from. But on arrival, finding its back untidied, it then goes off and brings seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and set up the house there, and so that the person ends up worse off, worse off than before. Now, in this context here, I have to make a quick commentary, which I did not include in the virtual circle, because it could be easily misunderstood. That our Lord here also speaks of the reality of evil spirits molesting, molest, molesting people, molesting places. And then, and we know also that how he conquers all those, uh, all those evil spirits. But I would like to stress the fact that we, okay, that part there that goes, any kingdom which is divided against itself is heading for a ruin and that house collapses against house. I would like first to stress the fact that we who are grouped together as a small We who are grouped together as a posthumous Rex or a little flat is not a coincidence. Although we are far apart, our Lord and Our Lady has gathered our hearts to be one. So, where are we? We are from different places and our Lord has gathered us here together. And then if a house against a house is divided, a house together with other houses is united. That's why here, although we come from different circumstances, we are united together with one desire, which is to please our Lord. Let us therefore be fraternal and familiar with one another. In this case, let us extend it a little bit into our own personal families. You know, that in the family, there will always be conflict. You cannot avoid them. But these conflicts are not essential conflict. So these are conflicts that could happen simply because of lack of understanding at the moment. Let us pull back the people together. Let us be united again. Because it will not make sense that we are good with our friends but not with our blood family. So it must be that we have to be grouped together. Faithful to the Christian vocation that God has given us in baptism. Let us sincerely pray for one another, and in our own little way, help through personal apostolate.
to make this little family grow. Remember, it will never be big enough for our Lord and our Lady to take care of. When we talk about apostolate for the love of God, there is no such thing as family planning. So, you know, as a matter of fact, it will be our bad disposition will be uh, contraceptive so that those who could have come into that family of God cannot. So, we have to make sure that we don't have any contraceptive mentality that means bad temper, then uh, bad jokes and things like that. It must all be something that would encourage people to be one with us. Now the talk for the mind, something up for the circle, is something that you may have heard already in the past. But there's a little difference in the emphasis in which I give it. It is on the whole approach of it as a norm. For many of us here, we treasure this month dedicated to our lady. We as good children always cherish those moments when our mothers are honored. We know that. So, Whatever it is that makes our mother look good, then we like it. Somebody praises our mother, then we like that person. And then for a child, his mother, even if she is not the most beautiful, for the child, she is the most beautiful. Then why? Because there is that bias, bias of love. Because and uh, she is my mother, I came from her, and she, God gave her to me, and no matter what. I remember a brother of mine my mom, embracing my mom, and then my mom was uh, uh, sweating because of a lot of work. In Dutuanon, or in Visaya, they said, I don't know si mama, baho si mama, delay, 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 baho si mama, humot si mama, humot. No matter what, oh, mama is humot in spite of the powers. Why? Because it's mama. Now, it is in the same thing here that we approach our lady with the sentiment of a child, happy to be with our lady, no, uh, or with our mother, no matter how those little inconveniences may possibly affect them. These special moments of our lady are no less. Let it never be a mechanical presentation of the rosary. If a mother could pressure the prattling of a baby, which is senseless, but nonetheless an effort to reach out to say something to its mom, without that, maybe <clears throat> you would not have, you would, for those who are not married or who, are, who have never taught children, you might not understand it. But then, uh, for a baby, they're trying to talk to mom, the mom would embrace the kid. Does the child mean something? Yes. Can he articulate it? No. But the child is trying to say something. Personally, I have experienced this. Teaching prep, they are not articulate in many things. Sometimes they cry out of frustration because they cannot express. But you, as a teacher or a parent at the time, you know what they are trying to say. So, our lady is much more than that. It's more than just intuition. It is the light that God gives her in order to understand us better, especially in the rosary. Going back to what I said, the child could be prattling and prattling and prattling, but then does not make sense, repetitive, but the mother knows. The mother knows, and uh, that is what I already expect of us. As I mentioned in the past, some impious in the windows are thrown against the repetitiveness of the rosary. I have mentioned it in another in another circle, or maybe here, where in an impious implication was well, uh, insult practically. You know, was told to me by a non-Catholic saying that okay. And then so, a person who does not know precisely would end up saying that. No? No, when you love somebody, when you have a girlfriend, and then even if you tell her a million times I love you, you're not tired of it. You say it nevertheless. And the girl is the same. 
So if they really love you, she will sit there, she will tell you, I love you, and then almost endlessly. It's never tiring. It's never tiring because it is said out of love. Precisely this help marriage, these little gestures of prayers are precisely uh, the expression of love. So for a child who truly loves his mother, it is never tiring. On the other hand, Let us remember that many progress are affected because of the monotony of meaningless repetition. So what do I mean in, what do I mean with that? Without that repetition, nothing would ever happen. Let us say the twenty the clock, twenty-four hours, and then the twenty-four hours become a day, a day becomes a week, a week becomes a month, on that regular repetition. And in that regular repetition, it goes on until we die. But in that regular repetition, we have grown from baby, teenager, grown up. In that particular repetition. So, there is something, a meaningful repetition that happens in our lives. Cycles are precisely that. You have winter, spring, summer, or fall, as the song would go. But then, how many winter, spring, and summer, summer or fall has gone? And we would have remembered some. Uh, memorable things during those times. It is precisely that. There is that meaningful repetition. And this meaningful repetition instilled in us that sense of progress. It has been like this for many years, but this is where I am, that is where I was. Then the other analogy I have here is precisely that these meaningful repetitions are like blades of a propeller or the blades of the of the vapor, the timunan. Why? Because the propeller rotates at its axis. It does not move anywhere. The moment the propeller moves out of its place, the plane will crash. So it stays. And then it rotates and rotates and rotates. Without that rotation of the propeller, you cannot reach your destination. So that repetitive, meaningful repetitiveness it's an assurance of progress which we will not see at the moment. And we know that we are all a part of that repetitive, meaningful repetitiveness. So the closer is done. Why? Because it is like the propeller which propels us. Now, if we are concerned about getting from here to Manila in an airplane, remember that in our bodies we will have the repetitiveness of the rosary because it our trip is from earth to heaven. And that is quite the distance. Now, are we sure of going to heaven? With difficulty, yes. But with the rosary, it is very easy. It is precisely why our lady has given us the jet uh, in order to uh, go to heaven. Our whole rosary, therefore, in a way, acts like that. We have to remember that the distance we have to cover is from here to eternity. Going there in any other way might be possible, but not guaranteed. As Our Lady guarantees us through the devotion of the Rosary. Truly, the one who says it with filial trust and devotion towards that most lovable mother, to him it is a sign of predilection. Examination of conscience. Do I often realize that I'm in God's presence? Do I try to say the Holy Rosary daily? At least for this month of October, let us make our Holy Mother happy by saying many the Rosaries. Have I wasted my time? Just for uh, Poseidon or Poseidon, apparently there was a correction of the way it was pronounced. No? We always say it as Poseidon, but then, uh, I heard it is supposed to be Poseidon Adventure. There was that picture there, or rather part there, when our, an old lady died. She drowned because she cannot let go of the box of jewels that she had. 
with her. And then we have to be reminded that none of those could propel us to heaven. Are they important? Like St. Teresa would say, money is, an, is the dung of the devil, it is a good fertilizer. But we don't eat fertilizers. So they are used. On the other hand, uh, the one of the, the things of leading to heaven will lead us there. They are not to be used, they have to be put on into us. That's why our professional, social, and such activities are simply almost like uh, fertilizers, useful. Do I specifically take care of my professional formation, devoting enough time and study to improving my performance and increasing my prestige? Do I try to work in an orderly way so as to be more efficient and give greater glory to God? Do I do my work when I should today, now, or do I deceive myself by leaving it for later, which is the same as not doing it at all? <clears throat> do I allow myself to be dominated by gloominess, not realizing that it is an ally of the enemy? Do I always work with the happiness that comes from knowing that I am a son of God? Through baptism, we become God's children. And as good children, obedient to God's law. Our joy is in the happiness of doing His will. It, do I faithfully fulfill my commitment of praying for the work every day? Am I generous in the use of my time devoting part of it to accomplish the activities entrusted to me. Right now, in this little group that we have, what are, what are the tasks uh, that is expected of us? Primarily first, do your norms well. Do sanctify yourself well. Next, sanctify others. Then, whatever little service you can render for our Lord, do it. But what is important first is, those tasks that we become holy because just by being that we contaminate others. Am I presently trying to attract some of my friends to our apostolate? For someone who truly loves God, there is that compelling desire to bring people to Him. It is our Lord once again crying from within our heart. That's an announcement.